Okay, welcome. Hi, um, thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Garcia Webb. We are doing another Facebook Live today. I'm answering your questions. Um, thank you so much for posting them if you or sending them to me. If you have questions after this, you can leave it in the comments. You can leave it on the YouTube page. This is gonna be posted to my YouTube page and you can certainly um, ask future questions there and I'll answer them on the next one. Um, if you're just joining for the first time or watching this for the first time, welcome. I am a board certified internal medicine physician and I'm also board certified in lifestyle medicine and obesity medicine. And why is this important? Because I prescribe these medications all the time. I talk to patients about these medications all the time. Um, I talk about this day and night. So um, I'm here to help you with your questions and let's get started. Um, as a side note, I cannot answer personal medical questions. So if you sent in a question and it is kind of personal, I'm going to um, depersonalize it and just sort of make it appropriate for a broader audience and for more of an educational perspective. So let's get started for that. Okay, first question is a question about Topamax. What, um, okay, can, in theory, can somebody take Topamax and Buspirone at the same time? Um, okay, so I don't, this is not a personal question and I don't know any medications that somebody else might be taking for this, but theoretically, could you take them both? Uh, yeah, you could. Um, to my knowledge, there is no significant uh, interaction between the two of them. Um, you do, you know, buspirone is an anti-anxiety medication and topiramate can sometimes affect people's moods. So you do, anytime somebody's taking, you know, both, um, anytime somebody's taking topiramate, you do want to keep an eye out for any mood changes. Um, and so if you're already on buspirone or you're adding one of them to the other, you would want to make sure that somebody's mood was stable. Um, but... Uh, I think there's no significant uh, interactions, but if you um, are wondering about this in more detail or perhaps for yourself, um, definitely uh, follow up with your uh, primary care physician or whoever, whatever doctor is prescribing this for you. All right, good question. Okay, this question is about um, Munjaro side effects. How long do these last? Well, um, first of all, if you are having side effects with Munjaro or Zepbound, um, I am sorry, it's a lot. A lot of people have them, but I will say that they're usually less than with the other medications. And it's very hard to say how long they will last because some people have them for just in the beginning period and they're worse in the beginning. And some people have them the entire time that they're taking them and some people only have them when they change the when they escalate up on the dose and so i think you know when i'm thinking about side effects for any of these medications um, a lot of the times if someone is experiencing side effects that are significantly interacting you know affecting their their daily life um, i will usually extend the timeline in terms of escalation so if we were going to go up every month on a dose, I might change that to every two to three months and just see if those side effects go away with time without changing the dose um, because that usually makes people a lot more comfortable and then they feel like also a little bit more ready to go up on a dose if, they, if we've seen that, okay, they do have these side effects but they go away with time. And if they don't go away with time, that's also really good information because then maybe we don't want to escalate the medication or maybe depending on the side effects, it's not the right medication for them. So really gives you good information either way. Uh, okay, so in, okay, my 70 years of life, I've never reached my goal weight, but I've come close many times and every single time I lose weight, I view it as a lifestyle change. Okay, this is with regards to the lifestyle video, um, the rebound video that I just posted last week. Uh, I view it as a lifestyle change and assume that what I am losing will be lost forever. Of course, those assumptions were born of ignorance. I now understand that I suffer from a, a disease and I cannot consciously subvert unconscious processes. I hope to eventually be able to access GLP-1 drugs with the understanding that they aren't a panacea, but for now they are of reach due to shortages and cost. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
Yeah, I think um, I think it's you know in terms of lifestyle changes, really it's about um, making sure that you're doing everything within your control, and that anything that you can change on your own, you're really giving it your best shot and making whatever changes that you can make. And then, um, you know, where you land with that is helpful in terms of, you know, would a medication also be helpful? Like if you are, if you're really happy with the changes that you've made, but somebody's still having like a lot of food noise and they've heard that some of these GLP-1 medications can really help with that, like that might be something that they want to explore. Um, obviously the whole point of these changes or that video was about that this, the changes need to be sustainable so that you're not like really pushing yourself to do something that, you know, worsens your mental health to be healthy or um, really sets yourself up for failure in terms of asking your things of your body that maybe your body doesn't want to do or your body isn't ready for or you haven't really thought out how this is going to play out if you continue these changes for months and years so um, yeah i think if you are happy with the changes that you've made and you still feel like it's just you know it's not getting you to the health goals that you have for yourself and you and your physician are on board with you know where you want to be in terms of you know really actively you know promoting your health and preventing chronic illness then though you know that's where medications i think are really helpful and i think when people are at that point they are much more amenable to starting medications um, if that's a direction that they want to go in so i think it gives us a lot of good information if you've done everything you can do and then you kind of see where the chips fall and go from there uh, okay so yeah, gosh, though, I have to say, I really feel you on the shortages right now. It is brutal, really brutal. Um, it's bad in New England. I'm sure it's bad around the rest of the country, but it is anybody who's going through that. I hear you and I see you and I am right there with you. It is terrible. Um, okay, what do you do when you realize your friendship was based on food when you aren't hungry or talking about food all the time but your friend wants to or vice versa okay i think this is i'm not sure um i think this is on the site maybe this is sustainable changes one okay so i think basically what this is getting at is um yeah how these medications also change um your relationship so they don't just change you know, when people lose weight, it doesn't just change their body, but it also changes how they relate with food. And so that can also bring up a lot of things for patients when they are interacting with um, with their friends, with their family, coworkers. Um, you know, if you have always been the person who's wanting to order pizza at the office and now you just aren't, you know, other people might have things to say about that. So I think a lot of it is just you know, recognizing that you're, you're doing what you need to for your body, for your health, and, you know, also allowing space for the fact that at whatever size you are at, I think we, we know this, but it, it bears repeating, um, whether you're at your ideal body weight, whether you're, you know, close to it, whether you're not close to it, like people always, comment on what other people are eating and if you are like the picture of your ideal body weight and very kind of where you want to be there's going to be somebody who's like oh hey have a french fry or they might say that you have an eating problem or or they might wonder like why you're eating what you're eating you know people are just curious and i think sometimes for whatever reason in america people love to comment on what other people are eating regardless of that person's size so i think that's helpful to just keep in mind that you know maybe you know before you started your health journey or whatever we call it um you might have not been as tuned into the way people talk about food or the way people talk about food around you or the way you talk about food 
But when you're making these changes and if your body's changing and other people are noticing that, you might get more comments. And so just be ready for it. It doesn't mean that you have to change whatever you're doing, but people just comment. They just do. They just do. Doesn't have to mean anything about you. Um, so, but just be ready, be mentally prepared for it. Um, okay. Next question. What do you think about Orlistat? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I don't, I don't think about Orlistat a lot. Um, Orlistat is a medication that is helpful for, it's one of the very, you probably heard about it a long time ago. Um, it was that medication that you took that really interfered with the fat absorption. And they used to, oh, I forget what they called it. Um, they used to, oh, Alestra, I think it was. They put it in like chips and cook. They put it in all this, these medication. They, they put it in um, like snack foods and then people would like think they could eat more and then it gave them really terrible diarrhea. Um maybe they or maybe people took it maybe they didn't put it in snack foods i don't remember but either way it was more of like a in the 90s i think is when it first came out but um it's still prescribed i think um i really don't prescribe it because i don't think it works well um but you know there is a time and a place for so, some of these things and i think if you um if I had a patient that had a um, who's on a GLP-1 agonist and let's say had a lot of constipation, that might be a good place to think about it. But um, usually, I don't prescribe it. It's not not in my immediate arsenal. Um, it's just the side effects are terrible and it doesn't give you a lot of weight loss. So um, it could be a helpful kind of two for one for you know bowel side effects if somebody was really constipated but overall i would say i don't i don't think about it a lot but if you are curious you can definitely talk to your physician about it um i don't have like high hopes for it for people though um because the effect is usually pretty modest but there's always a time and a place for these things so um, that's going to do it for today thank you so much for watching and if you have follow-up questions you can definitely post them um, on YouTube. My channel is Weight Medicine with Dr. Megan. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye.